Hey everybody, Sean here from Board Paracord, and I want to show you how to make a paracord rock sling. Um, some people call it a shepherd sling, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. It, it allows you to basically throw a rock or a, a steel bearing at something is a lot faster than you could just by throwing it. So um, pretty cool. Um, so the first thing I want to do is go about I don't know 18 to 20 inches away from the end and I have about 10 feet here um, and we're just going to create a loop just like this and this is just gonna, gonna kind of be a marker for us so that we don't go any further than this knot and we're just going to do we're gonna create two loops one of them that crosses over so all you're doing is twisting the cord so that you get a loop the other one you're just gonna poke up through the loop and then pull that knot tight and then we're just making a slip knot. This is just going to be a kind of a marker for us so that we don't go past that point. So you can see, I don't know, that's about what 20 inches I think there. And then from there, we're going to go a good eight inches from that point. And we're going to twist this away from us. So you're going to basically just twist it over just like that. And you're going to twist it away. So kind of away. If you go back towards you, that's the wrong way. So you just want to grab the cord here, twist forward, and that'll give you a loop. Just like that. And now you want to take this extra cord and get it out of the way. That's just going to stay there for just a moment while we do this. Now grab this cord here that has the knot in it, cross it over top, just like that. And then you're going to bring it around, back off to your, to your left. So all we did is loop that around. So let me show you what we did here real quick again. Off that, that, uh, and this is starting to come loose, so I'm going to tighten that up. Um, so about eight inches from there, twist away, which will give us a loop this way. Basically, you just want the cord to go underneath of itself here and get that out of the way. And then you're going to take this cord, bring it over top, everything over, take it under everything, back off to the left. Now what that's doing, it's going to create another loop for us. So this point right here that went, here let me zoom in on this here. There we go. So we just created two loops. So what I, what I want to do now is bring this cord all the way up to the cord we have going vertical here. And this is about how long you want this cord to be. Maybe a little longer. So what you need to do is grab this loop here. And this is what you should have. Um, this is what it should look like once you get to this point. So we're just going to grab this loop. And we're going to pull a little slack so that this loop is a little longer now. And then pinch everything kind of together right here. And we want to make these two loops. Let's get that back like that. We want to make these two loops the same length. So if you look at these now, they're not quite the same length. So we can feed a little more out of this cord here, pulling there. And we should be pretty close. Yeah, we're pretty close there. Now all we're going to do is if you look at this, we have four cords. We're basically going to go under, over, under, over, wrap around, under, over, under, over, wrap around. It's going to repeat until all these, until it's filled up all the way up down to the end of these two loops. That's why these loops need to be the same length. Pull a little out of that one because it looked like it was a little longer. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to grab the end of the cord and just kind of follow it through. So we're going to go under, over, under, and then pull everything through. And these first few are going to look real funky. And then just cinch that, cinch it down. And there might become a time when you have to go back and kind of tighten everything back up. But all we're doing is a weave right here, real basic weave. Okay, so we, we're back to this point here. So now we're going to go under. You want to make sure that these loops stay right where they're supposed to be. You don't want it to cross over like it was like that, because what will happen is you'll go under, over, and under, 
when when actually this should have been over here okay so I almost messed that up a little bit but that's okay okay so here we go we're gonna go under over under and over and then pull everything through here like I said, these first few are the hardest ones to get this pattern going, but once you get it, you're good to go. And the first few, too, they don't have to be super tight. You're just trying to get this weave kind of to stay, stay put. And the next thing we're going to do is just repeat what we were doing. And I'm actually grabbing the end of the cord here again to make it a little easier to see. So under, over, under, back over. And now we're going to pull everything through. And it might help when you pass the end through and you need to pull everything through, just bite down on the end. There we go. And you can kind of see that we're starting to get kind of a weave going here. So at this point what I want to do is make sure my loops are the same length, which they are. Push all this cord toward the end. And then we want to start tightening it up. And you'll probably at the end of this, you'll probably have to go back and tighten it up. Um, you know, pull a little through figure out where it's going, pull that through, and just work all the loose, the looseness out of it. Um, but at this point, you can kind of let go of it, and it's it'll hold right where it's at. Um, it's just a matter of weaving now. So you get to one end. I probably wouldn't worry about tightening it until you do one full rotation, I guess, when you go down and then back up. And go. And once you figure out the weave pattern, it's pretty easy to do. Um, and see what I'm doing here. I'm grabbing these loops and kind of going in there and pulling everything down toward the end. And then you're going to grab this loop right here. And we're just going to pull that so they get it tight. And see how we have this extra little bit here now? We can go to the other loop on the other end and pull that tight. And that gets rid of your slack. I know it's real hard to see if you're not doing it yourself, but just trying to trying to get rid of that little bit of slack that's in there. And then we just keep going. Over, under, over, under. It's kind of hard to mess this one up. Hopefully it's not too dark for you guys. Let me uh, see if I can brighten this up a little bit. There we go. I hope you were able to see all that. I just looked up and saw my camera was nice and dark. It should be okay now. All right, pull that a little tight. It's not too hard to keep everything right where it's supposed to be, um, but you definitely need to pay attention where your weave is going. You never want to go over two and then under one because then you know you kind of messed up. It's always over, under, over, under. Even when you get to the end, it's under, over, and then your over turns into an under on the end. So it's if you just follow over, under, over, under, you're good. Good to go. All right, well, I'm not going to bore you with the rest of me, uh, <laughs> the rest of the weave here. So I'm going to go ahead and get real close to the end, and then I'll show you how to finish this on up. I got down to the end here and you can see you're basically just going to be weaving into these loops at the end. And when you get this far, I, I went ahead and I attached a FID. Now this is my middle size FID, um, so the paracord doesn't quite fit it. I can't find my regular one. But I'm just going to go ahead and get these last couple passes done. And the FID will definitely help you, um, you know, get through the last little openings at the end here. Um, just want to be careful with these twists that you can pull all the twisting out and 
It helps too to hold on to these loops and press everything that way. Big help there. Um, so we just got a few more to do here. Remember, over, under, over, under. Go ahead and pull it through. And you're definitely going to get some of these twists when you get to the end. All you have to do is, on the other side that you're pulling through, is twist the cord. And you should be able to get it to come out pretty easily. Go ahead and probably do one more pass, and then we're going to finish this on up. Yeah, that's pretty tight, it feels like. So I think that'll be my last pass. Now what I want to do is I want the cord to come up through the middle right here. So I'm going to, well, let's see, how can I do this? I'm going to go through my loop one more time. So we're going to come up through this loop, pull everything through. And then you should have a loop right here in the middle. See that spot right there? We're just going to go down through there. And that's going to be where the cord comes out on this side. And I want to put kind of not really a stop or not, but I do definitely want to put a knot right here so that the cord can't pull through. So we're just going to do an overhand knot, just a real basic knot. Doesn't have to be, I mean, you could make it fancy if you wanted to get real fancy, but it's just an overhand knot like that. And we want to move it right down onto the back side of this. So we're just going to kind of turn the paracord around itself so that it tightens up right onto it. Just kind of feed it through there. And this is kind of temporary too because as you can see a lot of these edges are a little uneven and this, these are kind of loose here so I actually am probably going to go back through and uh, just make everything look nice and uniform. Um, you can press this into a shape that will hold your you can use a steel ball, you can use a rock, either way. Um, you want this to be nice and flexible, so you don't want it to be super tight because when you let go of one end, you want it to be able to open and release the rock or the ball or your projectile, whatever that may be. Um, so I'm not going to go back and tighten it. I am going to go back and kind of make everything look uniform. Um, now, the other thing we need to do is get rid of this and... Uh, where'd my fit go? We're going to take the fit off this end. I don't know if it's going to fit on here or not. Uh, we'll make it work. That's yeah, tight enough. I want to do the same thing on this end. I want the I want the cord to come up and out, kind of just like what we just did. And I think to do that, what we can do is just go back through this middle loop here. And you can play around with it. I'm just going to go back through this middle loop. Hopefully the paracord will hold on. Hold on, paracord! So that I can get it through here. Well, I got some of the inner strands. Come on. There we go. And I'm just going to pull that through. Yep, just like that. And I want that to come off. Basically, you want one cord going off this way and off the, the same side. And what I mean by side is that the cord is going this way, not this way. So you kind of want both of them to be the same way. Okay, so now what you want to do is I'm just going to move this over. We're going to get over to our ends here. One of the ends is going to be a loop that holds onto your finger when you let go. And an easy loop to do is just to grab your extra here and wrap it around so you got your loop and just make an overhand knot with it so I might need a little bit more and you can work the extra out when you're done grab the loop take it over top of itself like that and then bring that loop up through the hole and we're gonna adjust this just a little so that my finger can fit in there so what you're going to do is you're going to put this on your middle finger. Well, there's different ways of doing it, but this loop you want basically to be on a finger so that when you let go of the other end, you don't throw the whole thing. So just a real basic overhand knot with a loop on the end. Real easy to do. The other side, 
Um, you just want some kind of knot that you can hold on to and you're going to release. Um, and one real easy one to do would be like a figure eight knot. It gives you a little extra um, something to hold on to. And it's real easy to do. Create a loop at the bottom. You're going to bring the cord underneath the center, or kind of underneath this cord. So you're going to cross over, cross under, down through the hole. And that's a figure eight knot. Real simple to do. Pull it tight. Gives you something to hold on to when you're, you know, slinging this thing around. But basically, what you're going, what you do is you put this on your finger, grab the other end, put the ball inside of there, start slinging it around, and then you let go of, you let go of the knot. This opens up like this, and the projectile travels off in a direction that you're aiming for. But I hope you guys like this. Real basic. It's a primitive weapon. Um, dates, oh man, I don't know. It dates way, 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 way back. But uh, don't forget to check out the Facebook group. This will be posted in there. It's uh, facebook.com. Oh, and don't forget to put a knot in this end too. You definitely need to have a knot, another knot similar to this overhand knot here so that the cord doesn't pull back in. Um, but yeah, facebook.com slash groups slash paracord on. I'll see you in there. And until next time, paracord on. Do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button to your left. There's other great videos all the time, and there's a few to the right side of the screen. And you can also buy paracord at our site with the link at the bottom left. Thank you again for watching.